quite an intimate environment, and I'm, I'm just going to dispose of the, the microphone and stuff and talk to everybody if that's okay. Can, can you hear me adequately in the back? I'm quite loud, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, I'm Sandy Duncan, I'm the CEO of YoYo Games, and the theme of the top, uh, topic of the presentation is the one and only slide you're going to see is HTML5 game development, is it worth it? Um, I spent 16, 17 years of my career, I'm old, at Microsoft, and I got PowerPoint to death, I can reassure you, so I just can't use the product anymore. Um, so I, I just, I'm going to talk from notes. Um, supposedly this is being recorded, but I, I'm, I'm not using the microphone, so I don't know if they'll get the audio on this. Um, as I said, I'm the CEO of YoYo -Yo Games, and I'm going to just give you a very potted history of YoYo -Yo Games, because it will help introduce why I think I've got some position on HTML5 for you. I actually started YoYo -Yo Games, I got the inspiration for actually being at Casual Connect in 2006. Um, you've got to remind yourselves a little bit that in 2006 there was no iPhones, there was no Android, there, there was the, the phone technology. We, we specifically founded YoYo -Yo Games saying we would never touch mobile. In fact, Apple came to us in 2007 and said, you guys have got a lot of great content. We said, we don't believe in your stupid iPhone thing, go away. So we made a few mistakes along the way. Well, our, our inspiration was seeing that there was a new context for games, which were these small, light, we used to, at the time we called them snack gaming. And, but our approach to, 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 to being involved in the industry wasn't just to create games ourselves. And we were also inspired at the time by YouTube, which back in 2006 was just an emerging phenomenon. We, you know, things have happened so quickly in the last few years. And so we tried to create something, we never called it this, but it was the YouTube of games. So we create a website, people could upload content, and our equivalent in that context of, of um, a video camera was a thing called Game Maker. It was a product that had been around since 1999. We acquired it in 2006, and it became kind of the bedrock of people being able to easily create content, submit it to our website. And our model was interesting. We wanted to be a, a developer and publisher of content. So we saw, thought of ourselves as a talent incubator. So what we had planned to do is the best games that came through the website publish them and share the revenue with them, that emerging talent. And we felt, thought it was quite feasible because this new era, and we were actually really pretty right, we could see the opportunity coming for people to do games at a lower cost, with less skill, and that, that would be meaningful and have an audience. We also thought that we would be exclusively a, a digital distribution company, that we weren't going to try and do retail package games. And we were, again, I think very right in that context, that you know what emerged from iTunes and, and on uh, was exactly that. Um, but in that gestation, it took us a few years to get our tech right, and so um, we were, in some ways, we pivoted. We went from being this, we did publish games, we published about 45 IPs using our own technology, and from that audience of, of, of potential game developers, some of them very successful. Uh, they Need to Be Fed was an award-winning game, Karoshi won the Pocket game, game, of, game of the Year in 2011, and so what we did find in that process, it was very hard to be successful iteratively with games. So one success didn't mean that the next game was going to be as successful. Um, and it, it kind of pivoted when we got a phone call from Zynga in 2000, and late 2010, and it was from Corp Dev. And at the time when we were buying lots of companies, we had the shortest Corp Dev phone call anybody's ever experienced. Uh, answered the phone, the guy said, hi, you've got an HTML5 game engine? And I said, no, we don't. He said, bye. <laughs> um, seriously, it was, it was almost as short as that. And, but it, it brought to a point that HTML5 had also been, funnily enough, at Casual Connect in Hamburg that year, and noticed that HTML5 was a growing theme. And we had been having discussions um, about could we take Game Maker and create HTML5 content using the Game Maker infrastructure. And so we were inspired by, by Zynga thinking it important enough to give us a corporate call on that basis to go ahead and do it. But four months later, uh, March 2011, uh, no, no, August 2011 at GDC Europe, we launched Game Maker HTML5. We were really excited because we thought we'd really cracked it there because that whole model of incubation and people submitting the websites and then doing it in a distribution distributable model in HTML5 and all the web-based content, we thought that was it. Um, and everybody came to see us said, wonderful, love the ID, this HTML5 thing's great, but can you do Android and iOS as well? And actually, there was a recurring, I'll come back to that as a recurring theme, uh, as a, what I think are one of the issues we, sh we should think of with HTML5. So we actually went back to the drawing board, took the HTML5 work that we'd done and added Android, iOS, and other platforms to it. So we ended up with a thing called Game Maker Studio, but that brings us to the HTML5 point I want to get to. That's enough of YoYo games. So let me talk a bit about HTML5. I mean, it, I don't want to say there's the good and the bad. 
there's the good and there's certainly the not so good. There are issues, right? And you know, human nature is to focus on the faults first, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, the first real big problem I see with HTML5, it, it's not a platform, it's a set of technologies. It's JavaScript, it's Canvas, it's WebGL, and a few other bits and pieces, but it's not a product. You don't go into Best Buy and say, can I buy one of your HTML5 thingies, please? You don't even look at a, a tablet and say, does that work with HTML5? I was at a meeting in Mountain View on Monday with a company who uh, ought to remain nameless, and all the guys in the meeting held, opened up their laptops they have all got these big HTML5 stickers on them. <laughs> and it started, it's an ugly, ugly logo. And, you know, it, 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 and it brings me around to the point I'm trying to make, that HTML5 is a set of technologies that are relevant to our industry, not to consumers. It does nothing. There is no consumer value proposition in HTML5. There's no reason to go in and ask for one. So it's an issue, but it's one that I think will be surmounted. But I'll, I'll come back to, to it, that in the positives. So, you know, and looking a little bit more at the technology as well, there are some other issues in there. Um, JavaScript is a nice programming language if you like it, and some people do. Um, but the technology of being just in time compiled, to me, is always going to be less effective than having a true full compiled language. Now, you can argue, I'm not an engineer. My head of engineering actually argues that it doesn't make a substantial difference. He does say there are more architectural issues with JavaScript, which I don't intend to go into here which he believes are, are major roadblocks to performance. Remember, in games, we need the best performance from the platform. We are at the bleeding edge of most technologies because we'll use most of what's available for a game. Graphics performance is generally OK. Um, and with WebGL, we've seen some pretty good performing games, not at the level that you'll see by going native on any platform, just simply not there, by a wide margin. Um, our technology today is semi-interpretive. And with our HTML5 technology, it's the same code, right? It, it, we just export JavaScript in there. And we get a, a, the very, very best performance we've seen on mobile, I should be careful, on mobile with HTML5, runs at about 80% of what we get from our native interpretive environment. When we run that through our new compiler, there's, there's just no comparison. It's a, it's a 10 to 100x difference. And uh, admittedly, you, but that 80% is closing in some environments. We've seen things like Tizen, from, um, which is an Intel, Samsung-inspired open organization. Good HTML5 performance there. Um, the BlackBerry guys have done a good job. Um, so there's adequate performance in mobile. So I really should draw that line between desktop. You've got so much grunt in the desktop these days that if your game's running at 30 FPS instead of 40, it doesn't really matter. It certainly doesn't matter to consumers. It might bother you. Um, but when you get on the mobile, there are other barriers as well. It's not just the set of assembled technologies or the consumer indifference. You get to the point where actually some companies, I would say, are actively preventing HTML5 performance on their devices. Um, I won't name them because it, 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 there's no point, but they have app stores to protect. And one way to do that is to make sure that the browser doesn't perform adequately to get around the app store issue. In many cases, the HTML5 native performance so if you're running JavaScript in some kind of packaged app, not through the browser, the performance is still pretty reasonable. So really, out of most of that, what, one of the real things I would, I would kind of point to is that keep the games reasonably simple. If you've got kind of puzzle platform games that aren't using an awful lot of, of uh, don't need a lot of performance, you can do well with HTML5 technology. There are other reasons why you may not do so well. And that's about distribution and momentum behind anybody. Back to the consumer point. Do people want HTML5 games? Is it a reason to buy one? It's not. It possibly never will be. The other perhaps bad thing about, about HTML5 is it's killed Flash. And it means that there's a whole generation of game developers with, without good access to that, those mobile platforms. So even if you had the access to the App Store, the Flash just isn't on the devices. Or if it is on devices, it's poor. And of course, as we all know, Adobe have pulled any strategy anyway. So that's the bad news. It's also the good news about HTML5. It's killed Flash. Uh, lots of us don't like it. Uh, lots of us believe we really don't like it because we actually don't know it's crashing our browsers and all that. Consumers don't really point to Flash as an issue. Um, but it, it's probably good news longer term for many people that, that Flash is, it has killed it. I mean, I, I, I'll stand behind that statement. It hasn't killed it yet, but it's killing it. Right. Um, so I can see that as good and bad news. 
Um, there is great demand for content, though, and this is the good news. Um, there, we have, I think, about 20 of our 40 IPs we've, we've, we've run through our HTML5 process, and we continually resell them and resell them and resell them to people. We don't make a fortune. People will pay a couple of thousand dollars, though, to get an app on their store who are trying to build up a collection of apps for launch. Um, the Tizen one's a good example. Um, I don't know what Google would pay, but the Chrome Web Store is another very good example of something that people are trying to promote and push. A lot of the old Flash websites know that they're not going to get content in the future, are transitioning to having an HTML5 led strategy for their content. So there's opportunities for content, but they're not the big monetization opportunities. And so there's a huge word of caution over that, taking on HTML5 in that context. I don't think anybody's going to get rich yet doing an HTML5 game. I could be wrong because there are areas like Facebook where you know writing a really nice social game and Facebook's quite openly supports an HTML5 embedded app as well as it does a Flash app. So it, I, I, I'm wrong in that sense, but um, you know I don't see big opportunities because it's HTML5. Um, the other really good news, and, and you know we we're, were talking about it a little bit before we started the presentation, is who are the companies that are behind HTML5, and that I think is unanimously strong. Um, Google with their, oh, hello, uh, Google with their Chrome Web Store. Um, <laughs> I'm having my photograph taken. Um, the Go Google with Chrome Web Store. Google, in fact, it's deep inside Google. Um, you know, they're threatened that the open web doesn't, if the web doesn't continue to transition in a, an orderly manner, they can be excluded, right? So they need open web to be a success. So at every point in Google, there's some, some initiative that's loosely HTML5. The most thing that's very obvious is the Chrome Web Store. And you know, that, that's something that they are still in the process effectively of relaunching. You can do a packaged Chrome Web app, which you don't have to be in the browser to run, so you can run it. It looks like a native app on Mac, um, as well as being run through the browser. And they will put money behind it. And that's one of the reasons we were in Mountain View this week. It was very interesting to talk with them about it. But you know, everybody's seen Windows 8, lovely product. But you know, a big part of the Windows 8 API transition was you can write a JavaScript app or you can write a Windows RT native app to get on the store. And both are acceptable submissions onto the, the, the Microsoft Windows 8 store. I know people making good money on Windows 8 store. Um, typically, it's a little bit kludgy. You're just as well to stick to premium pricing, just get people to buy the app. But there's appetite for it. And it's still 60 or 70 million people or whatever it is have got Windows 8 on their laptops. And they've got a direct link to the store. That's not a bad thing. And so there is an opportunity there. Um, Intel. Intel are betting the shop on HTML5. They don't make it terribly obvious, but all of their kind of tools and all their upper layer approach to you know, how you use Intel technology is fundamentally HTML5. Um, you know, I don't know how much I could, should say, but I've heard talk of um, they're even optimizing processor architecture to execute JIT and JavaScript together you know, uh, in, in, in a neat way. Uh, I should be careful that we've signed all sorts of documents with them. I've probably just broken a big rule there, but um, I've heard this uh, piercing. Um, so, you know, they're very, very serious. They've made massive investments in this, you know. But we sat down with their um, software team thinking they would get really excited about Game Maker and they hated us because we don't do JavaScript in our IDE. They, they've got such a pure approach to it's got to be JavaScript. It's not. They don't want to see game maker language and stuff. And we execute, we, we export, we create pure JavaScript. But they really didn't like us because they thought we were devaluing JavaScript as part of the development experience. Interesting. Um, what does it mean for developers? Well, I talked about monetization. Um, You've really got to be careful because it is difficult. It's a, about this user perception. They don't have to need an HTML5 app. That's fundamental. But I think what, we'll what balances that is the support from people like Google and Microsoft. It's more tacit support from a consumer perspective, but it, they're getting it whether they want it or not. But it's not there yet in terms of people demanding content. And then that, it means the volume of users. I think outside the Windows 8 store, the route to market is very difficult. Very difficult. Um, again, I said the issue of not being a product is a consumer issue. The other one is monetizing through ads is tough. Um, you were asking me about it when you sat down, and part of the problem is the way that ads are bought by the mobile ad companies. They're, 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 they're sold to the advertisers on the basis they'll be on mobile. So if you take an HTML5-based ad, which there is very few around, 
I think sponsor pay have them. Uh, there's a couple of people doing HTML5 ad content, but if you put that on mobile and, it was, and, and you put it on web and it was sold as mobile, there's a problem there. Because the advertiser say, I'm not running a web campaign, I'm running a mobile campaign. So there's a conflict even at that level. Um, you have other conflicts because there's just no inventory, but, and that's part of the problem. It's also the technology is part of the problem. Um, so it's quite difficult to monetize with ads in a kind of an innovative way. You have to go to somebody who's got HTML5 advertising targeted content, and there's not much of that around. Um, it makes it hard. Um, what else? Yeah, but, yeah, and back to the other thing, there are large organizations and aggregators looking for content. So I think, for me, when I see our business, our business is really selling our IDE, but we do sell our apps as well. I see us making a bit of money, but I wouldn't write an app to be a game, to be an HTML5 game only. And so that kind of brings me around to what I really want to say in terms of taking the development thing on a stage is how can you develop for HTML5 successfully? So first and foremost, think of it as keeping your development costs down. Because if you really want to go, the, there's really two routes. You can either, I, there's three routes. You can just go the whole, go native and just write JavaScript and CSS and do a bit of WebGL in there. And you're going to lock yourself into a pure JavaScript route there. However, you don't lock yourself in completely because it kind of part is a hybrid approach. There are good companies like Lude who are exhibiting here. Um, PhoneGap, which I think was bought by Adobe and put into um, the open source um, stream, um, or doing HTML5 wrappers. So you can write an HTML5 game and then wrap it so it looks like a native app on the device. So it basically is running JavaScript on top of iOS or whatever. It's neat, it works. Performance issues a little bit in there. Um, my head of engineering says actually he thinks Apple's non-WebGL performs because Apple don't support WebGL. That's one of the other issues you hit. So you optimize for the graphics and you find WebGL isn't on the device. Um, I don't know how the guys like Lude get around that, but go talk to them, it could be interesting. What's the name of the company? L-U-D-E-I, they're a Spanish company, I think, but they have an office here in San Francisco. They exhibit it, they've got a stand out there in the, the hall you walk through. It's interesting stuff and, and it, it does allow you to extend your monetization opportunity. Again though, oh hello Oscar, you come to introduce me. Yes. Uh, this is Oscar. I'm not fair for the Don't we worry. Start at one. No, we're going to start off as well. Oh, okay. Maybe My I apologies. Don't worry. Um, so back to these wrappers. They, they do extend out the ability to get your game distributed. But back to that earlier issue, which is technology. You're not going to get advanced games running in that way. They're just not going to perform. Um, you can take it another step which is going to find yourself a, a good engine that creates HTML5 as well as does other things. I'm not even going to mention mine, I'm going to mention a couple of other ones. The one thing that actually is interesting in the whole equation, Unity doesn't do this. And you know, so if you're a Unity dev, you are going to have to think of something else at least for now. Um, there is technology um, called Inscripten, which I, I better get this one right. You can use the Clang compiler for LLVM, which then take the bit code and turn it into JavaScript. Jeez, am I right? That's, that's, that's more or less correct. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good enough, all right. Yeah, yeah, and so you can create JavaScript, and I, I suppose in theory, because a, a Unity also uses LLVM in certain instances, you probably could get JavaScript out of it for now. But I, yeah, you're, you're grimacing, so am I. I'm, try, I'm trying to be nice to Unity here, all right? Um, Unreal does it. Unreal do it as well, do it? Only for Firefox. OK. So there are roots, okay, but they're, they're none of them perfect. The other thing is to look at some of the, 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 the IDEs like Game Salad or Construct, a bunch of guys in London um, called Sira, S-C-I-R-R-A, a reasonable engine, um, but they can provide you with HTML5 roots. I know, I'm shaking my head too. And of course, you, you can look at Game Maker as well. So, you know, I just want to conclude to give you some time for questions and stuff, if you have that. That HTML5, I wouldn't call it half-baked, but it's not there. And, but there are opportunities in the space if you're very careful and segment them. I think my full recommend, I've switched that off Oscar. Okay. My full recommendation would be don't use, don't take a JavaScript approach if you want, but think very carefully about the other ways that you can monetize, not trying to be HTML5. Does that make sense? So either use the packaging or find another way of getting your app from JavaScript into some other method that's more native on other devices. And then you'll get the more broader range of opportunities, because the real cost in your app is in developing it in the first place, your game, is the, 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 the game written in the first place. And so you need to spread the return.
return across multiple platforms. And so I think if you focus only on HTML5, you'll find it quite difficult to get that return across multiple platforms. Well, um, to, that, Current, yeah, right. to that point, though, this question. Uh, another, another view would be develop an HTML5. Um, if you want to be on uh, tablets or laptops, um, you, can, you can go through the browser on those platforms and then use a wrapper uh, for mobile. No. Is that true or not true? The perf right, let me be right <coughs> brutal about it. The per performance of Safari with HTML5 is sucks, all right, just sucks. If you've got something that's very lightweight, yes. a simple puzzle game or a kind of a, you know, a brand promotional thing, it, it might be okay, it might be okay. I don't even know if the Safari browser allows you to cache a game, so it, 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 I, I'd have to check, but I think every time you run the game, you've got to download it. I, I, I might be, it's something to check as well. So the user in a mobile environment is hitting the bandwidth requirements, you know, the costs of, of downloading data and all that stuff, sort of stuff, every time they run your game. And so I wouldn't recommend that at all. Using a wrapper and being a native app on those platforms <coughs> is the only way I would consider it. But in those cases, uh, say I had developed a game for Android, uh, would it be So the question is, if I've got an Android game, would I do? If you've written it in JavaScript, yeah, I mean, like, but it, it's all, you know, it's, 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 is there a commercial opportunity that justifies the cost of doing it? If you think so, yes. But I would say now, if I had an Android game, I'd focus on getting good Android distribution. There's plenty, I mean, Android's great for having lots of different stores. You know, we make a few thousand pounds, dollars, sorry, a few thousand bucks a month. Um, from Barnes and Noble, for example, we've got like 20 games on the, the Nook store. Didn't cost us anything to get them up there. We just had to package them up a little bit, and you know they just make money. And I think I'll make more money there than I would rewriting the game as an HTML5 game and trying to find distribution for it. That, that I would caution that. You mentioned earlier the Yo-Yo compiler and the increased performance, which I've also read about on the website. Yeah. And I believe is coming soon. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about? where that increased performance comes from and whether or not it's affected by the lack of WebGL on iOS? Actually, no, I won't talk about it because if that's a sales pitch. I don't want to do that. Come and ask me later. Yeah. Hey, let me talk in the context of HTML5. Um, there isn't a compiler for JavaScript. right? And so if we had a compiler, it still wouldn't help for JavaScript performance. There's a theory that says using LLVM in this inscript, using inscriptive, basically, through LLVM might be more performant, but we don't think so. Gentlemen? Um, you were saying about mobile advertising that it's not a terrible way to for monetizing, but isn't Google AdSense trying out HTML5 advertising? I really don't know. If they are, it's great. I mean, I'm just saying I don't know of many sources of HTML5 ads myself. Okay. If they are, it's great. Look it up. Yeah. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pleased to hear it. I just didn't know that. Sandy, is it true that? I don't think it's not an option. So just so everybody had a question, if you've got lots of animation and sounds, don't do it in HTML5. It depends on the platform, right? Um, web audio, which we use, is okay, um, but it's not that efficient. I mean, I'm not the coder here, right? But as my understanding is, it's not terribly efficient. Um, we've seen some funny issues with graphics performance on free, when we hit above 60 FPS, but then again, that's not gonna happen in high animation. We think there's some kind of fundamental problem with WebGL in there. But we, we, we can't, we actually ask, Google are gonna analyze it for us, because they, they, they didn't know about it either. They're really, they, we had the WebGL guy there. But I think if you're doing any game that, that's high on CPU and, on, and or GPU usage, I wouldn't do it in HTML5 for mobile. Fine on desktop, yeah, but I wouldn't think of targeting mobile with it. Do you really believe uh, that Flash is dead? Do, do I really believe it's Flash is dead? Yeah, I, not yet. Do you really believe that there's no future for Flash? I think there's a future for Flash and web, but when you get to the point where the browsers only support HTML5, which is, is possible, Flash can't work. And again, look, there's a kind of a political thing in it. If you look at what's going on, I, I think Adobe have just messed up. They've just, they're cut out, they can't get back in. And HTML5 doesn't allow for plugins. 
just doesn't do it. Flash is a plugin. It's dying slowly. I mean, Adobe are looking for what they're going to do next. They're not trying to take Flash onto another level. But for Unity, then, Unity is a plugin too. Yeah. It's not supporting the I think they still have, no, they still have the oh, plugin. Yeah. They were going to have support for Flash directly in the new Flash player. So the, pl the plugin was the Flash player. So they have their own plugin which they support. You'd have to ask Unity. I mean, they, they have their, I think I, I mentioned earlier that Unity and HTML5 don't mix very well together yeah, sure. today. They could make it. I hear they're doing some 2D stuff. But we're saying like the Flash is a plugin and there's all them linked by the fact that it's a plugin. But Unity is a plugin too and it's good success. Yeah, but it doesn't work on mobile. Yeah. No. I, pl plugins suck. I mean, we, we used to have a plugin for our website. And the bounce rate on that page was 95%. People got to the page and said, I want to run this game. Whoa, no. Mm -hmm. And ask Big Point. Ask them how Battlestar Galactica got on as, and not because of Unity, but as it relied on the Unity plugin, that people won't install it. And I think their bounce rate was not as high as mine, but it was very high. And what blocks Unity to add a compiler to compile its native? Uh, I don't know. You'd have to ask that. The, the, you can't compile JavaScript. You have to create JavaScript. Yeah, you, I mean, you can switch language, like uh, Ejecta does. Ejecta is... Not for HTML5, you can. Yeah, it's not that, that, I'm only talking HTML5 here, yeah, right? I'm not talking browser and all that stuff. Because I, I was thinking of starting a game, and I was uh, thinking, what would be the best solution today for a company? Which technology you use? And actually... Talk to me about that one later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you no sales pitch, okay. But Unity is a great tool, don't, don't mistake me, but it, the, Unity does not offer an HTML5 solution. Yeah. They may do in the future, but they'll have to contort to get it's not it. Yeah. Any other questions? Gentlemen? Back in the, back in the old days, HTML before HTML4, oh. um, you know, the standards were one way, and the market dictated the standards yeah, yeah. a lot clearer than they do with yeah. HTML5. It certainly could do. I mean, I, my, my view on it today is that the market creators are, are Google, they're Apple, they're Microsoft still, they're Intel still, and if they have their way, you won't have browsers with plugins because they don't want it. And they've got their own reasons. You know, I, I, I don't know if you're here, I, I, you know, Intel may put some architectural support in their processor for JavaScript, right? They don't want you using, there, there'll be reasons why they don't want you to do it. So I think collectively, there's so much money, and it's the only reason I believe in HTML5, really, is I think collectively there's so much momentum mm -hmm. willing it to succeed as something that it will eventually just become the de facto web standard. It just, I just can't see it not being there. And that means that the, the, the browsers will have to cut off those plugins because they won't be able to say, I'm an HTML5 browser. Microsoft won't distribute it. You know, it'll just get harder. That's all. It'll be a very, very slow and painful, not even painful, it'll just be a very, very slow change. Eventually, somebody will start spending money telling consumers why they need HTML5. I can't work it out for myself, but they will eventually do that. And when that happens, people will come in and say, this, is this HTML5 enabled? No, I don't want to buy it. I want the one that is. You know, 4K TVs, who needs them? But consumers have been taught to go in and start asking for them, right? So we probably only have time for one more question because it wants to be that last one. Oh. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the that's the cause of death of any yeah. uh, any any conversation. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you very much guys. Yeah. That's Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.